I don't believe that the existing discourse brings about change. I don't think it has done. Sometimes we have those moments in life when we actually gain a certain point in time where we have absolutely clarity, clear understanding of a certain issue. And one moment for me was when I actually realised that the existing discourse wasn't changing the rules of the game. Things were staying the same. All we were doing was focusing more and more on the catastrophe rather than looking forward to the vision of a new world. For me, what I realised in that moment in time is that in fact when we start looking to the new world we want, then what we do is we start taking the steps towards the world that we want. And that for me is very, very important, the envisioning of where we want to go. Now, the reason I believe that the existing narrative is not working uh, is very obvious in the existing climate negotiations. What we're seeing there at best is a compromise. Did you know that we now have over a thousand negotiators? It's difficult enough to get 200 people agreeing to something. I, sorry, 10,000, not 1,000, 10,000 negotiators. How do we get 10,000 people by consensus, all to agree to every single line? This is almost impossible. Now this was something that actually hit me very, very hard when I was at the climate negotiations 2009, speaking on a platform in Copenhagen, when it collapsed. And I saw that and I felt it. And I, it felt very painful at that time because I wanted a strong binding agreement that everyone was really, the 60,000 that were there, were really charming for. But it didn't happen. And what I realised there and then was that all we were doing was focusing on the negative not really actually visualising and working out what the positive was. All the time the dialogue was around the catastrophe. And for me, this was all about the doom and gloom. I've had enough of the doom and gloom. I want to be inspired. That's what drives me. And what I realised quite recently is that the word emergency, which is what we're in, the true meaning of that word is the state of emergence, which means that something new can come forth. And that was very powerful for me to understand that. Because what I realized was that I didn't want to focus on the nightmare anymore. I wanted to focus on the dream. And I'm completely with Martin Luther King, who said, I have a dream. And when he said that, he galvanized millions of people right across the world with those words. And what he did was he said, I have a dream, and then he laid out the vision. Nobody remembers I have a nightmare of speech. They remember I have a dream. That's what empowers people and motivates them to move forward. And that's what motivates me. My dream is something I believe is worthy of doing something in my life to inspire me and that, is, that can and does actually inspire others. Now that might be mad, you may think, that actually I'm going after a dream rather than a nightmare. But actually, I believe, and my dream is, that we can live in a world of peace. I believe we can live in a world without damage and destruction. That is my aspiration. That is what drives me forward. And I believe that's an aspiration worthy of giving my life to. And that is precisely what I'm doing. Did you know this? It is actually the law to put profit first above everything else. It is the number one legal duty for a CEO in a company to put profit above all else. So it doesn't matter whether or not he's destroying the Atlas of our sands or, or whether or not the Amazon's been raised as a result of illegal logging or putting down water crop plantations, soybeans. What happens there is that we've created a body of law, and it's a number one law, it exists in every country throughout the world, that doesn't look to the consequences, doesn't look to the consequences for our generation, the next generation, and the future generations. Hear the music coming. <laughs> Very timely. change the law, because the law is just rules of the game at the end of the day. And this is about creating
creating a whole new body of law. This is about creating earth law. This is about closing the door to ecocide, ending the era to mass damage and destruction. When we do that, something quite remarkable happens here. Because what we do is we can close down the dangerous industrial activity, which means that the excess carbon emissions stop. We can actually abate climate change. Climate change, after all, is just a symptom of a larger cause. It's an outcome from something else. Most of it is actually generated by human activity, human activity that can be changed, but can be changed for the better. This is about prosperity without austerity. This is about life where all flourishes. So this is really about taking us a step further forward. This is about creating a world that's not just sustainable, which is a pop up in Europe. This is about building a world that's resilient. And this is about you. You are powerful. This is about the two degrees of separation that we have. And this is about my fourth point, the emerging narrative that's happening here. And the emerging narrative is about ending <coughs> the of genocide and putting in place earth rights, earth law, a crime and international crime of genocide. We have a window of opportunity this year, and it's the Earth Summit, happening in Rio in June 2012. I'm calling on all our leaders of the world to make ecocide a crime. And I believe you can help me do that. When it's two degrees of separation, it doesn't take much of us to become a power, look around us, and see who we can speak to, who can take it to the leaders further on from there. So I'm giving my life to making that happen. What about you? Thank you.